Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about two compiler optimizations. So the first one is called loop peeling, and it's this optimization where a compiler may peel off a few iterations of a loop, and one of the main reasons it does this is for um, uh, enabling other optimizations like vectorization. So how did, exactly does it work with something like uh, std generate here? So std generate, uh, we're just using here to fill our array of 256 integers with ones. And you can see we've got the assembly on the right hand side uh, with O2 optimizations, but not yet vectorized. Um, and let's try to understand what's going on here before we enable vectorization. So what we do is we uh, get our starting pointer uh, to the start of our array and add 1024 to it. So we're basically just calculating the ending address of our array, which will be the starting address plus 256 ints times four bytes per int. Then we have our loop here where we're actually storing our ones. So we store one into our array. We move our current pointer over by four bytes, so the size of an integer. And then we compare our current address with the uh, ending address uh, that we pre-calculated up here with this LEA instruction, load effective address. And then we either jump back to the top of the loop um, if we're not done or return if we are done. So if we go ahead and enable uh, F3 vectorize or enable vectorization here, how does this change? It doesn't really change too much. The only real difference is now we're storing four elements at a time. So we're using this move DQA instruction to load four integers into an X minimum zero register, which is just a 128 bit register. So it can hold four ints. And then we're using this move UPS instruction to store the contents of X minimum zero, basically to store those four integers into memory. And in each iteration of the loop, we now move over by 16 bytes. So the size of four integers instead of four bytes, the size of one integer. And we have the same compare and jump not equal. So where does loop peeling come into play here? Well, what if our array is say 257 elements? Well, now, you know, we have the case where, you know, our, the number of elements in our array isn't evenly divisible by four. So it can't only be handled by this loop here, right? This loop only stores four elements at a time from X minimum zero into memory. So what happens is your compiler will peel off that last store, right? So you can think of this as peeling off, say the last iteration of that loop and performing it uh, separately. So here we still have, um, Right, we're still loading our values into X minimum zero. We're still pre-calculating our ending address. And then you can see here, we still have our loop where we're storing four elements at a time. But then after this loop is done, it goes ahead and does that last iteration separately with just a normal move into the last position inside of the array. And you can see this happens, uh, you know, as we say, increase this from 257 to 258. Now we have kind of two trailing elements. And you can see that now uh, we take care of that in a similar fashion where we load these two integers into RAX and then store RAX right after this main loop completes. If we increase it one more time, so to something that isn't divisible by four again, uh, now we have to patch those last three loads, right? Um, after you know this main loop is done that's storing four elements at a time. So we do that with you know the combination of the storing of the you know two integers at uh, LC1 and then also just a normal move of a single integer here. So we basically peeled off three of those stores because they couldn't uh, be handled by the simple loop here that just stores four elements at a time. So that's a little bit on loop peeling and how it can help enable vectorization, right? So instead of just giving up on vectorization completely and storing things one at a time, if we have an odd number of elements or a number, number of elements that isn't divisible by the SIMD width, sometimes your compiler can just peel off a few iterations of that loop vectorize part of it, and then leave the other uh, part as non-vectorized. Now, another kind of similar optimization that we'll be looking at now is this thing called uh, loop versioning. That's where your compiler may create multiple versions of the same loop to handle different scenarios. It'll check at runtime. So let's think about the case here where instead of having uh, a std array here, we have a std vector. So what's going to be the major difference here? Well, the major, major difference here is that uh, the compiler in this case isn't going to know the size of our std vector um, at, at uh, compile time, right? So it can't, you know, exactly peel off, you know, as many uh, as many you know iterations of some loop um, as it needs to. It can't. It doesn't know if it needs to peel off one iteration. It doesn't need to. You know, it doesn't know if it needs to peel off two or three iterations. It's something that we can only tell at runtime in this case. So how does your compiler handle this? Well, let's take a look here. And this is handled in this case with loop uh, versioning. So here, right, we have a little different of a case here since we don't know how many elements we have inside of our vector. 
So the first thing we do is it looks like we're loading in a couple pointers here. So a pointer in RDI and then RDI plus eight. Now these will just be a pointer to the start of our data and a pointer to the end of our data. So you know, if we think of these as our start and our end pointer here, this comparison is just saying, hey, is our start pointer the same thing as our end pointer? And now if these two things are the same, that just means our vector is empty. So you can see we have a jump of equal here where we jump down to our return. So the next thing we have here is some logic in here to calculate the number of elements inside of our vector. And this is done by a, um, a subtraction of the two addresses from each other. So we have the address for our end element um, and the address for our first element. And we subtract the two and then we have to do a little bit of scaling here with shifts in order to convert you know, our address, which is in bytes, into the number of integers. So all this logic here is really doing is calculating the number of elements inside of our vector. And then what we use that, that uh, number of elements for is a comparison. Now this comparison is really just asking, hey, can we use you know, a store of four elements at a time? Or do we have to go you know, element by element? So basically, you know, can we use a vectorized version of the loop? Or do we have to use the non-vectorized version? So you can see if we have a smaller number of elements in our comparison here, so jump with below or equal, we go to this label six down here. And our label six is just a loop that stores elements one at a time. If we have you know, a huge amount of elements or you know, more than you know, this threshold number of elements inside of our vector, we just fall through and you can see we do a similar thing as we saw in the previous case with std array, where we load some elements into our x mm zero, um, 128 bit register. And then we have this same kind of loop here where we're storing four elements at a, at a time, right? So we're storing the contents of x mm zero into our current address, moving our address over by uh, 16 bytes, four integers, and then doing a comparison to see if we're done. Right? So this is called loop versioning, right? We have two versions of the loop here. Uh, in this case, we have a version of the loop where we're storing elements one at a time. So we can basically peel off an arbitrary number of elements. And then we have our version where we're storing four elements at a time, right? So in this case, your compiler is just providing you with, you know, at, you know, runtime, multiple different options uh, depending on the size of your vector, right? So if you have many elements, we can store those elements, you know, four at a time until we maybe hit the last few that we have to store one at a time. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode. It's a brief introduction to these compiler optimizations called loop peeling and loop versioning. As always, feel free to check out any of the code for any of my other series at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.